intentional drawings. So that's what we call intentional learning. So for some of you who are in, into status quo, you will be, uh, what they call this, mapag-iiwanan ka na ng panahon. So what you will do, you should do an intentional learning. You just don't sit in your office, or if you don't, you sit in an office and just do a drafting work and just sit. Spend your eight hours a day and doing nothing in terms of progressing your career. So one thing I'm encouraging you and suggesting is to do intentional learning. So this is, these are some of the, my suggestion in terms of uh, technical aspect of our profession. So we'll go on the second uh, aspect. What is the second aspect? This is the management aspect. Now, what is management? Uh, sorry, excuse me. Management aspect, where you conduct your system and people. Uh, now, let me show you the profile of people who are in management aspect. These are the seasoned architects. And who are they? Mostly you look like this. Okay. But the kami. Okay, so these are project managers, construction managers, team leaders, design managers, general managers, professors, and deans. Okay. So normally the seasoned architects are most probably more than ten years of experience. They're now currently working on the top positions, managerial positions. Okay? So on this aspect, you are now working on your own company. Oh, sorry, this is the business, sorry. On this stage, we are now starting to work and produce outcome based on people around us. It's not something coming from your own effort. It always comes from other people, from your staff, from your fellow architects, other professionals. We are now starting to establish standards, processes, and systems that work not only for you, but for the company. You are now, right now, working to be an effective multiplier rather than a diminisher. I just want to share to you about the multiplier and diminisher. Um, I read uh, one article in uh, Harvard Business School, and this is one of the sites also that my, my, my boss or my, my team leader in Callison article, Grant Seaman, mentioned to me that as a, as a leader and as a manager, you should be a multiplier of your people, not a diminisher. What does, what does it mean? It means that you encourage people to be effective. You make sure that that person is empowered to do things so that later on it will not benefit you, but it benefits the whole thing. The whole, the whole company, the project that you are working, because you are now, you are now working as a team and you are not working alone. So the, man, the, the mindset of a, a technical aspect person is just his focus on his skills and his strength. His strength. But in the management, you are now working to make everything goes well. So let me share some of my suggestions in this category. The first one is mentorship. If you are a manager and working as a head of this department or you are a project manager, you do your mentorship. If you don't do this one, what will happen is you will do a micromanagement. Micromanagement will, will exemplify being a diminisher rather than a multiplier. Kulang na lang siguro, akin na nga yan, mouse ako na magdadraft niya, di ba? Pero if you are doing a mentorship, you are encouraging your people to step up and do their work. The second one will be further studies. And this is something that we can look upon. For example, if you are into BS architecture later on, you will say, oh, maybe I can do my graduate studies or I'll do my doctorate. Because you want to level up your knowledge, not only in terms of practice, but also the knowledge that you can gain on another field. So that's the reason why some of architects became an urban planner. Some architects become going to the venture of lead design. Some are going into interior design. Para hindi na mag away di ba? Okay, so the, the third one will be efficient monitoring. So if you are a project manager, you are a construction manager, or any manager, What's important always in your process or in your work is to be efficient. You don't want too much overtime because you dreaded that experience when you were a technical technician. Diba? Ako, I don't like overtime. Sabi nga, when I work abroad, people who do overtime is really the efficient, non-efficient people. No? Sila yung mga ano, hindi effective. Okay? So efficient monitoring, this is the third one. And then the fourth one will be standardization. When you work in a system, there's a standard. Standard is not for paperwork. It's something that will help 
your process. It's something that it helps you in terms of managing your people. Without standard, it's chaotic. That's the reason why we have building codes, right? Although it's a little bit absolute, it's not really updated, but at the end of the day, standardization is what we aim for. So this is the fourth one. The third one will be systems and processes, okay? So it's not only standardization, but how, how systems goes, how's your operation flows. So for example, if you are a designer, after you do the sketch, what's next? After the, that one, what's next? So you create a process. And this process is something that you can teach to the people who's working with you. Okay? So let me go to the third aspect. Believe me, it's very short. Okay? So the third aspect will be the, of course we know, business aspect. Where we profit and make a difference in your practice. So on this aspect, you are now working on your own company. All the skills, the people, and experience you acquired through years of your professional life are now being tested. No? So it's not about you're working for someone else. It's not you just do your own work, but you are now having your own company. This is, this is your make or break opportunity to establish the practice that you dream of when you were just aspiring for one. Okay. So what are the things you have to look on this aspect? Okay. So. Siguro, for some of you, you have your own company. For some of you, you're aspiring to have one in the future. So these are the movers and makers. I'll just make some photos of this one. He did some sketch for an infrastructure or a, a transportation project. So these are principal architects, founders, partners, associates, CEOs, and presidents. Okay? I'm sure some of you here are like that right now. So what are the things that you have to look on this aspect? First, legal and tax. The funny thing about it, a lot of architects doesn't have the legal entity of their company. Sometimes they don't know the legal uh, implication of what they're doing. Some of you are not paying tax, some of us. So if you have your own company, you should be aware on this one. The second one, accounting and finance. So we're not talking about architecture right now here, we're talking about business. A lot of us cannot even create a tabulate an accounting process or even to create our financial planning or our budget as an architectural firm. The third one is the human resources. There's, so as we understand that people is also our asset and that's the reason why China and India use their manpower as their resources and human resources is very important especially right now in our profession nagkaroon nga ng autocad nagkaroon nga ng revit pero yung bulk ng working drawings dumami rin before it's so simplified to do a working drawings in manual yung expectations on number of pages and details less but right now because of the advent of this technology we also require a lot of things and even the renderings becomes more competitive. So human resource is very important as a, a practicing architect. The fourth one is operation. How you operate your company. How you deal the people, the money, finding clients. So everything is... We're not talking about design here. We're not talking about how good you are on the site. We're talking about the operation of your company. So it's another battle, another field that you need to work on. And then marketing and sales. The funny thing about it, we should always believe that as long as you have one building, it's not enough to do a marketing. But did you know that for some companies, the big architectural firms, they're hiring people to find jobs for them. And these are not architects. They have business develop, development people. I work in Dubai, I've been close with RMJM there, and some of the bigs, and even in Atkins. They have their team to find jobs, find lead, get some competitions, get from big developers to get projects. Unfortunately for us architects, even in school, we are not being trained that you should be having a good marketing in terms of your profession. I'm not saying the on-the-spot marketing as unethical for our code of ethics, but what I'm saying, we don't touch on this one. 
Marketing and sales has a different aspect. Some people confuse about sales and marketing. Example of marketing. Marketing, someone will say to you an announcement that this is my product. That is marketing. But if you profit on that product, you close that sales, or close that contract, that is sales. So don't mistake sales and marketing as the same word. They're different. So in terms of us as an architect, when we say marketing, we're exposing ourselves that I'm an architect, I'm doing this one, I'm good on this one, will you hire my service? And then close that account, close that contract with your client, and that's sales. If it doesn't have a contract, it doesn't profit you, that is not sale. You just make up marketing. So these are some of the five points that I